Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's start our Sunday's Gita class with some prayers. Om Parthaye Pratibodhitam Bhagavata Narayan Swayam Vyasena Gratitam Puran Munina Madhe Mahabharatam Advaita Mritvarshini Bhagavati Mashtadashadhyayani Amutvam Anusandhami Bhagavat Gita Bhagavishini Namo Astute Vyas Vishal Buddhe Full Arvind Ayat Patra Neta Yen the Via Bharat Tail Purnaha Prajolito Gyan Maya Pratipaha पर पान पारी जाता है तो त्रिवेत्र एक पान है ज्ञान मुद्रा है कृष्णा है गीता अमृत दुहे नमः सर्वोपनिषदों का वो दोगता गोपाल नंदना पार्थो वत्सा सुधीर भोगता दुगदम गीता अमृतम महत वसुदेव वसुतम देवम कंस चानुर मर्दनम देव की परमानंदम कृष्ण मुवंदे जगत गुरु भीष्म द्रोण तटा जयद्रत चला गांधार नील लोट पला शल्ले ग्रावती कृपेन वाहने करनेन वेला खुला अश्वथाम विकर्ण घोर मकरा दुर्योधन अवर्तने सो तीरना खलु पांडवई रन नदी के वर्त का केशवा पारा शरे वच रोज अमलम गीता अर्थ कंधोटकम नाना ख्यान केसरम हरि कथा संबोधन अबोधितम लोके सज्जन शट पते रह रह पेपिये मानम मुदा भुयाद भारत पंक जम कलिमल पर ध्वंसी नश्रे यसे मुकम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंग्यते गिरन यत कृपातमम वंदे परमानंद मातवम यम ब्रह्म वरुण इंद्र रुद्र मरुताह स्तुन वंते दिव्यस्तवे वेदे सांग पद क्रम उपनिषदे गायन्ति यम सामका ध्यान वस्ते तद गतेन मनसा पश्यन्ति यम योगिनो यस्य अंतम न विदुसुर असुर गना देवाये तस्मै नमः फिर अशोपनवर भगवत गीता बुक्स लास्ट चैप्टर एंड लास्ट वीक व्हेन वी एंडेड द क्लास वी वर एट वर्स नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड वर्स नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज टेलिंग अस व्हाट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स अ सात्विक एक्शन द प्योर एक्शन एन एक्शन व्हिच इज ऑर्डेन्ड which is free from attachment, which is done without love or hatred by one who is not desirous of the fruit, that action is declared to be sattvic. Here. Okay. So we can write down all these qualities of the sattvic action and reflect upon our own actions which are sattvic. And if they are not, try to make them sattvic. So this is what we talked about last week, towards the end of our class. Now let's look at what is a Rajasik action. That's where we are starting our class today. Verse number 24. Yatatu kaam upesuna karma sah ankaren vapuna Kriyate bahu layasam tat rajasam udahritam yat means which tu means but kam upesuna by one longing for desires. Karam is action, sa ahankarain with egoism. Va means or, punha means again. Kriyate is performed bahu layasam. With much effort. That means that Rajasam Rajasik Udahritam is declared. But that action which is done by one longing for desires or gain done with egoism or with much effort is declared to be Rajasik. So the nature of the Rajogyan is that it creates intense desires for materialistic enhancement, also sensual enjoyment. So the action of the Rajasik is that which is undertaken to win one's desires with an extremely insistent that I am doing it. I act like a karta pan mentality. 
And these kind of actions, they take a heavy toll on our body also. Like a physical fatigue and there could be a mental exhaustion and extreme strain. The person is impelled to act and struggle by a well-defined and extremely arrogant ego sense. So that's where all the tension comes, strain comes. And he thinks he can perform what nobody else can perform. So all the time a person is exhausted with his own anxieties and fears because there's no guarantee for success in every endeavor. So when an individual works with an arrogant ego, with all its self-centeredness, becomes restless. That's how we make ourselves exhausted. So these are the actions which are Rajasik actions. And what is a Tamsik action? Anubandham kshayam hinsam anvekshe chuporusham mohat arambhate karam yat tat tamsam uchyate Anubandham consequence kshayam decay or loss hinsam injury anvekshaya without regard to cha means and porusham ability like one's own ability. Mohat from delusion. Arambhyate is undertaken. Karam is action. Yat means which. That means that. Tamsam, tamsik, dark. Uchate is declared. That action which is undertaken from delusion without regard for the consequence, loss, Injury and ability is declared to be tamsik. So tamsik actions are performed without any consideration for the consequences. Without any regard for their loss of power or vitality. So such people never care for the loss or injury caused to others by their actions also. Nor do they pay any attention to their own status and ability when they act. So it's like a very careless action, irresponsible karam you can call, undertaken merely because of some delusory misconception of the goal. Habits of drinking, gambling, corruption. They are all examples of tamsik actions. Because such people have no regard for the consequences of their actions, they lose their vitality, injure all those who are depending upon them. They even lose their dignity and status or the capacities, all for the sake of their pursuit of a certain delusory goal in life. Because they just want a temporary joy of some sense gratification. It's almost like a tickling satisfaction of some fancy of that time. So actions of a tamsic type immediately prov provide Sorrow. It's like a, soon enough uh, there is a pain and sorrow. Rajsik actions, they will take a little longer time to bring uh, some disappointment and sorrow. Whereas the Sattvic action is always uh, blissful and steady. That's what you will see. So the intellect of those in Tamogun are covered by the fog of ignorance, avidya. 
So they are oblivious to or unconcerned with what is right and what is wrong. And they are only interested in themselves. It's like a, their own self-interest. They pay no heed to money or resources at hand or even to the hardship incurred by others. So such people, they work or their work brings harm to them and to others also. This is what Lord Krishna is saying. Kushay. Kushay means decay. So tamasic actions cause decay to our health, vitality. It's a waste of effort, waste of time, waste of resources. Okay. So this is what Lord Krishna is saying. And that's why I gave you the examples of gambling and stealing and corruption, etc. Those are all tamasic actions. Now, there is a doer also. This was the action. Lord Krishna gives us a clear definition of who is a sattvic doer. Because sattvic doer is the one who is doing the sattvic actions. So, sattvic karta, doer. Verse number 26. Mukta sang anahvadi driti utsaha samanvita Siddhi asiddhyo nirvikara karta sattvika uchyate. Mukta sang, who is free from attachment. Anahavadi, non-egoistic. Dhriti utsaha smanvita. Dhriti is firmness, utsaha is enthusiasm. Smanvita means endowed with. So endowed with firmness, and enthusiasm. Siddhi a siddhyo in success or in failure. Siddhi is in success or siddhi is failure. Nirvikara, unaffected. Karta, the doer. Satvika, pure. Uchate is called. An agent or the doer who is free from attachment, non-egoistic, endowed with firmness and enthusiasm and unaffected by success or failure is called sattvic. So you can see that the sattvic doer is not inactive. Rather, he works with the enthusiasm and determination. The difference is that uh, the sattvic doer's work is performed in proper consciousness. We will not try to cling to things in worldly attachment. And sattvic karta does not believe that worldly things can bestow satisfaction to the soul. Sattvic karta will work with very noble motives because the intentions are pure. That's why they are filled with utsah, the enthusiasm, and dhriti, the strong resolve in whatever they do. Their mental attitude results in the least dissipation of energies while working. Because where do we leak our energy in the anxiety of success or the failure? So they just put all the energy into doing what they need to do instead of wondering whether there will be a success or failure. So they are able to work tirelessly to fulfill their sublime motives. And they may accomplish great things, but they are from, free from egoism. How? Because they give all the credit for their success to God. 
because everything is poured at the feet of God for a sattvic person. So in this verse, uh, Lord Krishna uh, very clearly telling us uh, a sattvic karta is the one who is free from attachment to any of his relatives also. Because most of the time we are attached to our relatives. So mukta sangha, no attachment and no ego. So no clinging attachment to the things and the beings around for a sattvic person. And sattvic actor truly feels that he has not done anything spectacular. Even when he has done the greatest good to mankind, because he surrenders his ego to God. So just remember that uh, free from attachment, non-egoistic, but with firmness and enthusiasm, unaffected by success or failure. These are the qualities. See, dhriti, dhriti is like a persevering tendency to push ourselves towards the goal. That is dhriti. So we got to learn how to apply ourselves <coughs> with this dynamic enthusiasm while we are working. Okay? And he keeps on doing ever striving unperturbed. Okay? See, average person gets perturbed very easily. In success, we just jump up. And in failure, we just get into that sad mood. That's why the depression word is so common these days. A sattvic person just stays in equanimity. Okay? So, dhriti and utsah. These are the two things you got to remember. So a karta of a sattvic nature is one who suffers the least dissipation of his energies. A sattvic karta realizes that in all his actions, his body, mind, intellect, sure they are working. Body is doing its part, but I am not the body. I am not the mind. I am not the intellect. I'm just only using these instruments to serve the Lord. That's all. And the real I is not doing anything. Then there's no waste of your energy. So the faculties of the intellect, the beauties of the heart, vitality of the body, these are all vehicles for us. We got just to learn how to use these vehicles properly. And who is a raj, rajasik doer, rajasik karta? Number 27. Ragi, Karamufal, Prepasu, Lubda, Hinsatmakaha, Ashuchi, Harsh, Shok, Anvataha, Kartaha, Rajasaha, Parikirtitaha, Ragi, passionate. Karamufal, Prepasu, desirous of fruits of actions. Lubda, greedy. Hinsatmakaha, cruel. Ashuchi, impure. Harsh shok nanvata. Harsh is delight. Shok is grief. Anvata, full of. Karta, the doer. Rajasaha, Rajsik. Parikirtitaha is called. So passionate. Desiring to gain the fruits of actions. Greedy. Harmful, impure, full of delight and grief. 
So that means extreme. Such an agent is said to be Rajsik. So an actor belonging to the passionate type is being exhaustively painted here. So full of desires, lot of worldly desires. Attachment also. So he is swayed by passion and eagerly seeks the fruit of his work. Ever greedy. So in the sense that such a doer is never satisfied. Because we know that greed, the more we have, the more greed grows. So never satisfied. So it's like it have a thirst for always for more. So you can say that his thirst is insatiable because his desires multiply from moment to moment. It's almost like when we put the ghee into the fire or any kind of a fuel into the fire. What happens? Fire just becomes higher and higher, those flames. So this is what happened to a Rajsik person. So when a person full of desires and passions works with mounting greed, naturally becomes insatmak, malignant. Will not hesitate to injure others, to get what he wants. So it's like a injuring somebody else to win his end. That is Rajasika Karta. So you can see that from here, the characteristics of a Rajasik Karta, that he is a deeply ambitious for materialistic enhancement. That's all it matters. Sir. They do not realize that everything here is temporary. They don't even pay attention that, hey, one day we have to leave everything behind. Life is not about matter. Sure, we got to use the objects, but don't be used by them. But a Rajsi Karta is convinced that the pleasure they seek is available in the things of the world. And when they see others succeeding or enjoying more than them, they become insatmak. Enviously, they will bend to injure the others. To fulfill their ends, they sometimes sacrifice morality. See, there's a degrees of Rajsikta. So if a person is closer to Sattvika, Sattvik, but some Rajsikta may not go to this extreme. But it doesn't take long to go down. It definitely takes effort to go up. And up is the Sattvik, Rajsik is middle, and Tamsik is below. So they become Ashuchi, impure when their desires are not fulfilled. And when they are fulfilled, they become elated. And they feel dejected when they are not fulfilled. So that's why their lives become a mixture of delight and sorrow, harsh and shok. So it is natural that such a passionate actor or a doer, when he acts in his blinding desires comes to live a very sad life of agitations. So one day joy or one moment joy, the other moments are full of delight and grief. That's Rajsik. And how does a Tamsik doer function in the field of activity? Let's look at in the verse number 28. A Yuktaha Prakritaha, Stabda, Shatha, Nashkritkaha, Alsa, Vishadi, Dirg Sutricha, Karta, Tamsaha, Uchade. A Yuktaha, unsteady. Prakritaha, vulgar. Stabdaha, stubborn, unbending. Shatha, cheating. Nashkritkaha, malicious. Al-saha, lazy. 
विषादि डिस्पॉन्डेंट दीर्घ सूत्री प्रोक्रेस्टिनेटिंग चर्मिन्स एंड करता डूअर तामसा तामसिक उच्चते इसेट अनस्टेडी वल्गर अनबेंडिंग चीटिंग मलिशियस लेजी डिस्पॉन्डेंट एंड प्रोक्रेस्टिनेटिंग सच एन एक्टर इस एक्टर भी तामसिक it doesn't even feel good to read this all these extremely negative qualities but this is the description of a tamasic doer according to lord krishna because his action is motivated by his tamasic knowledge remember last week we talked about what is a tamasic knowledge so tamasic actor has a tamasic knowledge and he expresses himself through his tamasic actions so they are all related so very first thing he says a yukta unsteady that could also mean uncontrolled yukta mind is one which is obedient perfectly under the control of the intellect that's a yukta mind that's why earlier we saw the word yog yukta steadiness a tamasic person doesn't have that he acts in the world spurred by the impulses and the instincts of his own mind okay sometimes doing properly sometimes not he is a yukta behaves with no control over his own animal impulses and low instincts that's why this person behaves as a vulgar person prakrita he is arrogant he is obstinate stubborn in nature and he will not lend himself to be persuaded to act more honorably in the second thing another thing he said over here shatha see ayukta prakrita stabda then shatha shatha is a dishonest he becomes dishonest he becomes extremely deceitful so here in the dishonesty or deceitfulness arises out of his incapacity to see any point of view other than the false conclusions he has arrived at so this kind of a person is not dependable at all because he is good at concealing his real motives and purposes and secretly works out his programs which will bring lot of sorrow all around him shatha nashkrita malicious so this term describes one who is bent upon creating fights quarrels disputes with a vengeful such a person pursue pursues his adversary to destroy him it could be in the family a family feuds those are the typical examples next characteristic he said is indolent alas a tamasic actor is a very indolent person spending his time in over indulgence it could be sleeping it could be just watching tv just doing something for himself only not doing what he is supposed to do he is an idler he avoids all creative endeavors and productive efforts he can easily procure enjoyable chances and pleasure goods he is actually a social parasite if you want to call it that's what this alas alasi person is because he enjoys and consumes without striving and producing 
He would rather have somebody else do the work for him. Puts uh, no effort at all. Vishadi, despondent. He has neither the vitality nor the stamina to stand up against the challenges of life. This is because his overindulgent nature has sapped up all his vitality and courage to meet life. You will see that a Tamsi Karta spending a lot of time complaining of the people and the things around him. He wants to stay away from the obstacles, but he continues to have endless thirst for sensuous enjoyments. Then he said, Dirga Sutri, procrastinator. Because this individual is so benumbed in his inner nature, slowly gathers within himself incapacity to arrive at any firm judgment. He keeps on postponing. Do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Until it's too late. So a person who is unsteady, vulgar, arrogant, deceitful, malicious, indolent, despondent, and procrastinating belongs to the tamsic type of the doer. So you can see that tamsic person's mind is blotted with negative obsessions. And he is undisciplined. The scriptures give injunctions regarding what is proper and improper behavior, but tamsic person has closed his ears and mind to reason. Will not even listen. There is a verse in Bhagavad Puran to describe all these kartas. Satvikaha karko sanghi rag andho rajasa samrita tamsa samriti vibhrashto nirguno mad apashriya. The worker who is detached is satvik in nature. The one who is excessively attached to action and its results is Rajasik. And who is devoid of discrimination is a Tamsik. But in this verse, Rishi Vyas goes little further. He says, but the worker who has surrendered to me, that means to God, has transcended these three natures. So if you want to become a nirgun karta, that means definitely not tamsik, not rajsik, and even beyond sattvic, surrender to God. But we can surrender to God only if we have those sattvic qualities though. A tamsik person cannot surrender. Rajsik cannot surrender. First, we have to become sattvic though. So that's why it's very important to, to know this in the detail. Maybe we don't have all the qualities of sattvic. Most of us, just some of the sattvic, some rajsik, and sometimes a little bit tamsik also. Here and there, maybe we can become a little lazy or we procrastinate. But once we know that this is a tamsic quality, then we avoid it. We push ourselves. And wherever we can offer the fruits to God, we should. Then eventually it becomes our nature. More and more actions when we just give the fruits to God. I'm doing it for God only. And we don't have to say it. In fact, it's better not to say it. It should be in our mind, not even in our words. 
Because sometimes if we say it, we become arrogant. And being arrogant is not sattvic. Lord Krishna says that's rajasic. So that's why this detail is so important for a very serious and a sincere sadhak. Very beautifully, Lord Krishna said this. Rishi Vyasa, he penned it down for us. Because whenever a true seeker discovers the symptoms of tamas and rajas growing in him, he should take notice of them at once and consciously strive to regain his sattvic beauty. This work we have to do. Nobody else can do it for us. We do many, many actions all day long. Some actions we do with the body, some with the mind, some with the words. Each, each and every action of ours, we got to see which color. Where does it belong? Are the words which I'm speaking, they are sattvic? The actions I'm doing, they are sattvic? Is my knowledge sattvic? Because we learned about that also. Knowledge can be tamasic also. Verse number 29. He says, Buddhe bhedam dhrite cha eva gunataha trividham shinu proche manam asheshena prithakta vena dhananjaya. Buddhe of understanding, bhedam division, dhrite of fortitude. Cha means and, ev means even. Gunataha according to qualities, trividham threefold, shrinu here. Proche manam, as I declare, asheshen, fully. Prithaktaven, severally. Dhananjaya, that is Archa. Here the threefold division of understanding and fortitude, buddhi and driti, according to the qualities as I declare them fully and severally. O Dhananjaya. See, the work is constituted of three factors, knowledge, action, and the actor. When an actor guided by his knowledge acts in the world, no doubt manifestation of work takes place. But underlying these three are two more factors. This is what Lord Krishna is telling us. Because these two factors, they supply the fuel and the motive force in all sustained endeavors. And these two factors are buddhi and driti. Buddhi is the understanding and driti is fortitude. So in the previous nine verses, Lord Krishna explained the constituents of work. Now he explains the two factors that impact the quality and the quantity of work. They not only propel action, but also control and direct it. So that's why he is going to talk about these buddhi and the dhriti, intellect and determination. So buddhi, we all know the faculty of discrimination that distinguishes between right and wrong. That is buddhi. And dhriti is the inner determination to persist in accomplishing any action we have, we have undertaken. Despite the hard, hardships, obstacles. So both are of three kinds in accordance with the modes of nature. That is what we'll see next week. So but understand what buddhi is. Talk about the jnana first in the last section, but now it's a buddhi. So, or I can uh, uh, define it for you that buddhi is the intellectual capacity in us to grasp what is happening around us. That is buddhi. And dhriti is the faculty of constantly keeping one idea in the mind. 
consistently when, when, when we want to work out, reach that logical end, that is dhriti. So consistency of purpose and self-application without allowing ourselves to be tossed here and there like a dry leaf is called dhriti, fortitude. So both are needed. Okay? So... So threefold, so first he is going to tell us, starting from verse number 30, he will talk about Satvik Buddhi, then Rajsik Buddhi, then Tamsik Buddhi, then Satvik Dhriti, Rajsik Dhriti, and Tamsik Dhriti. So we will talk about that and see how he has explained it to us so beautifully next week. Let's stop the class here. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnase Purnamadai Purnameva Visheshate Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much.